Hey everybody, I'm Brian Mulligan and this is an Autodesk Smoke Tutorial here at PremiumBeat.com. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to access your clip and library backup files so that you can recover your work in case you've ever had a corruption in a project or a sequence. Now we all know that crashes and corruption shouldn't happen, but they do and they happen to the best of us. I was working on a project recently with a very large ConnectFX setup. Everything was working fine inside my MacBook Pro and ConnectFX. But every time I would try and exit back out to the timeline, smoke would crash, and that clip would then become corrupted. Even when I tried to relaunch the project again, the project would crash upon launch because it was trying to open up that corrupted sequence. So the only way to fix this problem is to go into the clip library files and recover a previous save. So here's a very simple project. I've got a timeline here, and I've got one connect effects where I've done a screen insert on this iPad. You can see that here we've got a workspace, and the title is My Good Project, which is the name of my project. We now have our Libraries folder, and inside that there's an Edits library with my rough cut of my sequence. I've also got a library called Clips, and inside here are a few of my clips. So when you manually save a project or smoke auto-saves, what exactly is happening? Well, for that, we need to look at the OS level and look at Finder. Now most of the smoke system files are actually hidden by default. So you need to go to go, say go to folder, and type slash usr slash discrete. Hit go. And here you'll have access to the hidden folders where your project and clip information is. Now if we look at the project folder and open this up, you can see that here are all the projects I have on my system and here's a folder called My Good Project. If I open this up, there are a lot of folders inside here, uh, mainly folders that match the nodes inside ConnectFX and other tools. Most of these folders are completely empty. If I look inside Action, you can see that I've got some preferences and some presets, but other than that, there's nothing in here. If I were to manually save an Action setup, it would then go in this folder. That really has nothing to do with the clips in my libraries. So the project folder really doesn't have anything but saved setups in it. What we really need to look at is this clip folder. If I open up this clip folder, you can see that here on my system, I've actually got several media storage volumes assigned. And they show up as the StoneFS folders. I have a portable Thunderbolt drive, I've got a portable Firewire drive, and I actually use uh, media storage on my system drive for when I want to be really portable. So I know my Thunderbolt drive here is StoneFS 1. You may only have one folder in here, and it's probably StoneFS 7 by default. Just open up this folder, and inside here, you'll see the projects that are actually assigned to that media storage volume. Down here, here you can see that we've got a folder called mygoodproject.prj. If I open up this folder, you can see that, just like in our media library over here in Smoke, we've got our workspace folder, which houses a clips folder, which matches our clips library, as well as several edits, as well as these edits clip history folders. So when Smoke saves a project and your clip information in the libraries, it actually saves all that metadata here. Th this isn't where all your renders and cache are, this is just where Smoke knows where all the clip information is on your media storage volume. So if we jump back over to Smoke, and let's just create a new library. And we'll call this other b-roll. And inside this library, let's just move some of these clips here. So now we've got another folder called other b-roll. If we jump back over to Finder then, you can see that instantly we've got an other b-roll CLIB file. Now you may be wondering why there's a 000, an 001, an 002, and an 003 versions of these clip libraries. These are actually the backup files that we're interested in. So if I go back into Smoke here, and if I just do a manual save, and save the project, the project will save. And if I go back into Finder, you can see that now, with the manual save, other b-roll file has incremented, and we actually have a backup of it now. So how do we actually use these backup files? 
Well, let's jump over to Smoke. Go ahead and make a copy of our Rough Cut edit. And we'll name this Rough Cut here, Rough Cut 2. With Rough Cut 2, I'll make some changes. We'll just trim some shots and shorten this up. So I've made these changes. I'll go ahead and save again. And I'll simulate a corruption here just by deleting this entire edit. So now this edit is gone. So how do we get that edit back now? Or, sure, I could just undo it this moment, but if this were several steps back, or you opened your project one day and it wouldn't launch because there was a corruption in a clip after a crash, then you need to go into the clip library files. So to be safe, let's close down Smoke. So if we look at our clip folder inside USR Discrete, look at our project folder. The only thing we need to worry about are these edit CLIB files. The clip CLIB files are for the libraries, and our libraries aren't really the problem at the moment. We're just looking to try and get that one clip that was deleted or corrupted back. So the most active clip library is the 000 file. So what we want to do is actually replace it with one of these other versions. Now Autodesk support will actually do this a different way, and they'll actually do it via terminal commands. But terminal commands to me seem very 1980s, and I've honestly never had any problems recovering any data like this via Finder. So here's what I do. I rename the active clip library file, and we'll call this dot backup. It'll ask me if I want to use backup, and I do. So I'll choose one of my other backups. I'll try the first one first. And all I have to do is rename it to 000. This will now become the library that Smoke will load when it launches. So let's go down here and launch Smoke again. Let's load our project. And what we're looking for is our Rough Cut 2 sequence. I don't actually see it loaded here, so we probably have to go back to an older backup. Let's close down Smoke again. Updated. So what's happening now is these files are keep getting updated, and therefore they keep incrementing and pushing the older ones down. So as you launch Smoke and get into your projects, these clip libraries will back, will back themselves up, pushing older backups down. So what we need to do is rename this file again, dot backup2, and then let's go all the way down to this last file here, 003. We'll rename that to 000, hit enter. Let's go back and launch Smoke, launch our project, and now you can see that we automatically have our Rough Cut 2 version back. If we go ahead and open this as a sequence, we have our file, and it has our ConnectFX clip on it. If I try and enter this ConnectFX, go into the editor, you can see that we got a warning message. You can see that the ConnectFX for this clip has lost its setup and can no longer be edited or rendered. If you ever get a message like that, it can be fixed by going into the clip library files as well. If we jump back into Finder, you'll notice that there's a folder here called edits 00.clib underscore hist. If you open up this folder, you can see that there's a history file. You can see it contains the node information for your ConnectFX setup. So what happens is we loaded a backup file, and that corrected the clips in the library itself, but, we, but it's not pointing to the right setup files. So all we have to do is change the name of this folder here to backup, and, th and then go back down to the matching clip history folder, which was 003, and change that to 000.
these two files are basically the same versions. So if we jump back to Smoke now, so let's relaunch Smoke again. And now that we've relaunched Smoke, if I enter this ConnectFX setup, you can see that I can now access this setup and all my data is intact. So if I had issues with clips and other libraries, I just simply have to rename the 000 library as a backup and then rename one of the older libraries to 000 to make it current. And then any library that has a clip underscore history folder also needs to be changed. It's a little messy and it's a little complicated, but at least doing it through the finder level for me works very well. And you don't have to deal with any of those unfriendly terminal commands. The one thing you want to worry about is that Smoke will increment these saves every time it launches and you close out successfully as well as when it autosaves. And you only have three actual backups to work with. Now normally with a corruption problem, the project won't be able to launch and these backup files won't get overwritten. So you should still have them there to work with. However, if the latest version doesn't have the information you need, it is possible to go to this project auto backup folder. Inside that, you can see that there are actually more archived backup files. You can check the time and date to see if any of these actually work for you. If I open these up, you can see that there's a workspace TGZ file. If I open this up with an archive utility and unpack it, you can see that it basically gives me a folder. Inside this is a workspace folder where I have these other backups. So I can take these files rename them if I need to, to 000, and then copy them over into my workspace folder. And also remember to grab the matching history folder if there is one. If anybody has any questions, feel free and leave a comment here at Premium Beat. And I'll be back again later with more tutorials and blog posts. Thanks for watching.